respond to the environment and maintain homeostasis. Living things live in a constant connection with the environment, which includes the air, water, weather, temperature, any organisms in the area, and many other factors. These external environmental factors act as stimuli and can cause a response from living things. Organisms need to respond to the changes in order to stay alive and healthy. For example, if you go outside on a bright summer day, the sun may cause you to squint. Perhaps the bark of an approaching dog causes you to turn your head quickly. Just as you are constantly sensing and responding to changes in your environment, so are all other organisms. For example, a specialized leaf of the Venus flytrap senses the light footsteps of the soon-to-be digested green bottle fly. The plant responded to this environmental stimulus by rapidly folding the leaf together. An organism must respond to changes in the internal environment as well. Internal conditions include the level of water, nutrients, and minerals inside the body. It also refers to body temperature and hormone levels. Adjustments to internal changes help organisms maintain a stable internal environment. The regulation of an organism's internal environment to maintain conditions suitable for life is called homeostasis. Or you can just think of it as keeping everything in balance. For example, you have a thermostat in your brain that reacts whenever your body temperature varies slightly from 37 degrees Celsius, or about 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. If this internal thermostat detects a slight rise in your body temperature on a hot day, your brain signals your skin to produce sweat. Sweating helps cool your body. The ability of mammals and birds to regulate body temperature is just one example of homeostasis. Mechanisms of homeostasis enable organisms to regulate their internal environment despite changes in their external environment. So, um, this is from the notes as well, responding to your environment and maintaining homeostasis. If you respond to your environment in the notes we talked about and here as well, it talks about stimulus and a response. A stimulus is something that causes change. A response is the reaction to that stimulus. Um, so if, if you are outside and it starts to thunder or, or you see lightning strike, that's when I run. So the stimulus would be the thunder or the lightning strike and the, rea the response would be your reaction. Would you be, be you running in the house? Um, and then it talks about two Plants do respond. We talked about in notes how plants bend to the light as phototropism. And here it talks about what we talked about in the notes as well, where a Venus flytrap, if something lands on the little hairs, the Venus flytrap shuts and digests that little bug or whatever it is. Um, and then maintaining homeostasis, that's just the ability to keep your internal environment regulated. It's usually in like a range. You want a good, you have a good range where everything in your body can, uh, like sit and do its job. Um, if your temperature gets really high then or gets really low, then enzymes and other things in your body can denature. They can like unfold and they won't be able to do their job. And if the things that are keeping you alive can't do their job, then they can't keep you alive. So your body tries to sort of keep everything at a good, happy medium. Um, and that goes with hormone levels, uh, blood sugar, temperature, a bunch of different things and it says right here at the end that if you get too hot your brain's like okay gotta cool down so we will sweat we'll get rid of some water and other nastiness out of our pores so that way it can hopefully be evaporated off of our skin and cool down our body it'll take some of that heat off of us if we're really cold then our brain's like okay we gotta warm up so it can signal for you to start shivering and that causes some friction which causes you to warm up um, and the big thing here about homeostasis is you're able to regulate your internal environment despite changes in your external environment. So like I said, if it gets really hot in this room, your body will cool yourself, you know, cool down internally. So that way you're not going to melt. And then if it's really cold, then your brain will be like, okay, you need to shiver and warm up. So even though crazy things are happening externally, your body is going to work to help keep the in, your internal environment good to go. So number 26, what are some environmental factors or stimuli that organisms respond to? So you can respond to a bunch of different things. There are some listed up here, air, water, weather, temperature, organisms, things like that. So I'm going to say, I'm just going to say temperature. Uh, I want to say other organisms. Etc. 
Number 27, organisms must also respond to blank factors in order to stay healthy and survive. So it talks about environmental factors, but you have to respond to internal factors as well. Number 28, what are two internal factors that organisms respond to? They are listed up here, or some of them are listed here. The internal conditions include the level of water, nutrients, and minerals. So I'm going to say water and mineral levels. Number 29, give two examples from the reading of how living things respond to changes in their environment. So from the reading, living things will respond like, for example, if you go on a bright sunny, if you go outside on a bright summer day, the sun may cause you to squint. So, an example, uh, the sun may cause you to squint. Oops. Another example from the reading could be, uh, let's see here, the bark of an approaching dog causes you to turn your head. So, a barking dog causes you to turn your head. So number 30, if light is applied to a human eye, how does it respond? We just talked about that. If you go outside on a bright sunny day, then you're, you will squint your eyes. And we'll talk about sort of how that works uh, in eighth grade a little bit. Maybe this year for your time. Number 31, describe homeostasis. That is up here in this uh, last little bit. We can just say really quickly, I'm going to say uh, the ability to regulate and maintain a suitable internal environment. And number 32, explain how human shivering is a way of maintaining homeostasis. Well, we talked about if it gets really cold, your body doesn't want your, temp your body temperature to drop too low. So if it starts doing that, uh, or in order to prevent that from happening, your body will shiver. Whenever you shiver, you increase friction, which causes you to heat up. So condensed, I'm going to type out um, when you shiver, you increase friction, which increases your light temperature.